Okay, in this demo, I'm gonna show you another request from a student, and this is a feature called a background burst. So again, I got a student a couple of years ago who brought in a photo from some sports magazine, and they saw this really cool background effect, and they said, how did they do this? And I will always counter that with, well, how would you do it? And if they don't know, then the answer is you need more practice, okay? So they always come to me expecting me to have all the answers and luckily I did but you know you're gonna be doing this on your own so you're gonna have to practice with these things so I want to show you another Photoshop effect I'm gonna go to file and open and in chapter 6 I have folder 5 I'm gonna skip that one that's an old file so you could just skip it I'm gonna come down to folder 6 in chapter 6 and here is the end result this is the effect we want to make. These little bursts of light rays coming out from behind <clears throat> the kid. Okay. They saw this in a sports magazine. I didn't have a sports shot, so I just did it with a picture of my kid. So I'm going to close that up. And I'm going to go to File and Open. And then I'm going to open up Jonah Pumpkins, the original photo right there. Okay. Just like I said before. You can't really do an effect well if you have a background layer. So I'm going to double click the word background and call this original photo. Okay, what I need to do is make this kid separate from the rest of the photo because right now it's all one. You can't really slide anything behind this kid. Okay, but if I look on my paths, unlike the other file, I have not done a tracing of this kid. However, if I looked on my channels panel, there is a channel right down here called Jonah. And what I did is at home, I made a selection and then I saved my selection. So I, well, we wouldn't have to sit here and select him for 20 minutes. We can just recall it. So I made a nice detailed selection. I went to select menu and saved my selection so we could use this here. And now I want to use it again. Okay, so in order to see what it does, you'll notice this list of channels, the colors that make up this file, reds, green, blue pixels. And then you have this, what's called an alpha channel a channel that is a saved selection. So what I would recommend is you always click on the name. Okay, as soon as I click on the name, the other ones get turned off. Now I can look at the channel and the white area represents the selection area. The black area represents the part we don't care about. That's why it's black. I don't, we don't see anything. I wanna see what's lit up here, okay? So in order to get back to my photo, you click on the lit name, RGB. Okay, that turns off the channel. Don't click the eyeball because then it's going to look like a quick mask. So always click the name or click the name. Okay, so I have this channel. Now how do I use that again? So what I have to do is go to select menu and load a selection onto my screen. Okay, it's going to ask me right here, what channel do you want? So I got to click that name and come down to the name of the channel I want to activate as a selection, Jonah. I'm going to make it a brand new selection on my screen and I click OK. There's a perfect selection around this figure. So again, to duplicate a copy, it is Command J. You can see it right there. Now we've separated him from the rest of the background of the photo. Okay, what I want to do is somehow in between the original background and behind this copy is slide in a background burst of rays. So I'm going to start on the bottom layer, create a brand new blank layer, and I'm going to fill this layer solid black. D for default colors, option key, and the big delete key. Just fill it solid black. Okay, what I'm going to do then is go to my rectangle marquee 
And just so you can see this more clearly, I'll just turn off the top layer just so we see this layer here. I'm going to start with my rectangle above the file, click and drag down and make a very thin box like that. Right there from the top all the way past the bottom. Okay, if option and delete fills an area with the foreground color, then command and delete will fill this area with the background color. Okay, what I want to eventually do is select an even amount of black and white, like two stripes, a vertical stripe of white and an even vertical stripe of black. So I'm going to hit command D, deselect that. I'm going to zoom in real close. Just click and drag to the right. I can hold my space bar and pull this down. Then with my rectangle marquee, I'm going to start right above that white edge right here. Click and drag an even amount of black and white like that. And I'm going to pull this all the way down and let it keep going and going and going all the way down my file. It's traveling down here. It's going to take a minute because I zoomed in so close, but it's traveling down the length of that stripe. There we go. Right about there is an even amount of black and white. And I let go of the mouse first. There we go. Even amount of white and black. I can take my zoom tool and zoom back out now that I've got that. And what I'm going to do now that I'm on my move tool, I have these two stripes, white and black, selected. So I go to Edit Menu and I define them as a Photoshop pattern right there. I can name that, we'll just call it My Stripes, and I'll click OK. But now the, hit, now the effect is where did it go? What do I do? How do I use that? Okay, so Command D, deselected. I'm done making my pattern. What I wanna do is now fill this entire layer with black, white, black, white, black, white stripes. Okay, in order to fill a layer, you go to Edit and Fill. Now make sure you've hit Command D first. You gotta deselect this area. Then it's Edit Menu, Fill. I'm gonna fill that with a pattern. Then it's gonna ask me, what pattern would you like from our pop-up list? And right there at the end of the list, since that's the last pattern that we've added to Photoshop, it shows up as the last pattern in the list. I'm going to click on that. Just click right here so we get rid of that little pop-up. I want my blending to be normal, my opacity to be, opacity to be 100% solid black and white. No preserving the transparency. I want to fill this layer with my pattern and I click OK. There we go. But those don't look like bursts of sunlight. Those look like uh, a barcode. Okay, so another filter that's really fun to use is Filter Menu, Distort, Polar Coordinates. And what this does when it's set to rectangular to polar is it pulls everything toward the center and blast it back out from the center. So when I click OK, we get this burst effect. Okay, if I turned on my top layer, notice how these rays are all emanating from his elbow, and that looks kind of lame. So with my move tool, I want to move this out of the way and put the center of these lines right behind his head. Okay, I'll hit Command and minus a couple of times to zoom out so I've got room to work. And when I moved it, obviously the uh, burst effect is too small. So Command T to transform. And if I want to keep the center right behind the center of his head, where it's starting from, 
you hold your Option key or Alt on a PC. And now when I click and drag the corner way out like this, it is emanating from the center of that pattern right to the back of his head, like that. I hit return, that will accept the transformation, and then I can zoom back in a little bit. And hopefully you'll remember how to make black transparent. We just wanna see the white rays. Okay, so again, remember on your layers panel, right above your layers, you have your blending modes. And in screen mode, black will turn transparent. So now I can see through the black areas to the hay. I can lower right next to my blending modes. I can lower the opacity and get a nice lightly screened backdrop right there. To replicate the look that one of my students saw in a magazine and then came to me for the answers. That's fine, but in the future, you're gonna have to come up with your answers. So practice, practice, practice. And that's what makes it fun in Photoshop. So save this file if you're in my class to turn it into me. You're just gonna call it last name, first name, pumpkins. Always save files as JPEGs to turn in. And we'll move on.